Elon Musk aims to get SpaceX's massive Starship rocket into orbit for the first time next month in a launch he hopes will revolutionize the space industry. And we are all looking forward to this event. However, experts have a different opinion. They say Musk may not get his way. Why did they come to such a conclusion? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Earlier this month, Musk and his company SpaceX cleared another hurdle in its quest to launch its Starship system, which is the world's most powerful rocket, with the FAA granting environmental approval for orbital launches for the company's site in South Texas. The decision, announced on June 13th after months of delays and debates, requires several actions to ease the impact on public beaches and wildlife surrounding SpaceX's private spaceport at Boca Chica Beach, 20 miles east of Brownsville, Texas. But the ruling still represents a win for Elon Musk's space company, which could have been required to complete a much more comprehensive and lengthy environmental impact statement before any orbital launches took place. Despite the conditional approval for SpaceX, which still needs a launch license for orbital flights, the future of the rocket complex at Boca Chica Beach is less certain than it may seem. The growing facility, known as Starbase, has become the subject of heated debate among the state and regional officials who see the site as an opportunity for economic development, environmentalists concerned about the impacts on fragile ecosystems, locals whose community has been transformed, and SpaceX devotees with grand visions of living on Mars. To conduct orbital Starship flights from Texas, which would involve launching a bigger rocket than the Saturn V that took astronauts to the moon, the company would need to comply with 75 new provisions actions listed in the agency's 43-page review. These include limits on road closures and the creation of wildlife corridors, as well as other less conventional requirements such as preparing a historical context report of the Mexican War before SpaceX obtains the final FAA a license to launch its mega rocket. The document only covers 10 launches per year, 5 suborbital and 5 orbital, a limit that the company could easily run into once Starship starts flying. Adding to the pressure in Texas are legal actions by environmental groups, one suit filed and at least one more threatened. The FAA's environmental assessment included negative feedback not just from locals, but from federal agencies including the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Documents obtained by CNBC showed FWS found a decline in endangered piping plovers around Starbase and cited potential harm to other shorebirds and sea turtles should the spaceport expand. The findings are likely to fuel legal challenges from environmentalists. In May, the Sierra Club and the Carrizo slash Comicrudo tribe of Texas announced they were joining a lawsuit initiated by the local group Save RGV or Rio Grande Valley. The suit, filed in October of 2021, is not against SpaceX, but the Texas General Land Office, its Commissioner George P. Bush, and Cameron County for allowing the company to close the public beach for tests. Regardless, it is worth noting that with July just a day away, experts in the space industry aren't convinced Starship will be ready to launch by then. Greg Autry, a commercial space industry expert, said that many of the FAA's 75 terms are very trivial, non-engineering requirements that can be completed at the same time as others. But he went on to say that Musk assumes everyone doing the job is a clone of himself or someone who is a genius that basically never stops working. I would bet late July is technically possible, but I put my own money on August or September. Musk's timelines are always too optimistic, Autry added, something which the SpaceX CEO has admitted himself in the past. SpaceX and Musk have predicted various dates for the Starship launch. These included July and November last year, as well as January of 2022. Musk's latest prediction was made in February when he said he was confident that Starship would get into orbit this year. For Olivier de Weck, professor of engineering systems at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, it all comes down to two questions. Can all the technical work be done before July, and does SpaceX have the launch permit? My guess is that SpaceX is going to work on these terms in parallel because they have motivated, knowledgeable staff that work 80 hours a week, he said. 
One week at SpaceX is like a month at a normal company. Dweck said he wasn't sure if SpaceX could complete all the work in July. If it's not July, it's going to be this summer. Maybe August, September, Dweck said, adding there's a 75-80% to probability that the first Starship launch will happen this summer. Adam Baker, the co-founder of UK Launch Services and an expert in rocket systems, picked up on the fact that Musk tweeted SpaceX will be ready to launch Starship to orbit in July, but not that it would actually do so. It first requires a launch license, he said, but the FAA was not likely to issue one until all 75 actions have been met. Starship has the potential to change the way we do space travel, and that won't come without some environmental consequences, so there is a weighing up needed, Baker added. Of course, Musk still has some backup options. Musk always had plans to develop a star-based launch site in Florida, but when SpaceX decided to do something on a timeline, the dirt flew quickly. For now, the company is making great progress there. Less than half a year after the company restarted work on a Starship launch pad located just a few hundred feet away from existing Falcon launch facilities at LC-39A pad, a massive new launch tower has begun to take shape. If SpaceX's experience in Texas is representative, Starship's first Florida launch tower could reach its full height just a few months from now. Once it reaches its final height, that tower will become the second tallest rocket-related structure, which includes lightning towers, on the East Coast, only beaten by NASA's iconic vehicle assembly building. In addition to the launch pad in Florida, SpaceX may attempt to conduct launches offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. In Mississippi's port of Pascagoula, two oil rigs owned by SpaceX, named Phobos and Deimos after the moons of Mars, are being converted into Starship launch platforms. These platforms could host the risky launch tests that the Kennedy Space Center can't support. Over time, I think there's going to be floating spaceports, Musk said in February. We've got these two converted oil rigs that are going to be turned into orbital launch sites, and they can be moved around the world. Musk idealistically envisions a thousand starships leaving Earth every two years, when Earth has close encounters with Mars, to facilitate humanity's first permanent migration to another planet. With such a cadence, Texas, Florida, offshore platforms, and elsewhere may be needed to truly settle on the Red Planet. When do you think is the likely date that Elon Musk and SpaceX can start launching starships? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, take care and reach for the stars. Thank you.